This is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Sean Anders, writer and director of Instant Family. Now, I want to start with what seems like an obvious question to me, and that's, I get that it's an interesting story, that totally makes sense, it's very sweet, but my first question sort of is about getting your family on board with this. What was that process like? By the time the idea came up, my family had really... um, it had really become a wonderful family and really become the best thing that ever happened to me. So the idea of, of telling a positive story around this was very honest because my story was, you know, it had some tough beginnings and the kids definitely had some tough beginnings. But, um, but my story was oftentimes really funny in reality. I had a lot of funny stories to tell my friends, a lot of really awkward stories to tell my friends, a lot of disturbingly funny stories. Um, and there was a lot of real joy and you know, my real story, t- at least to me, is pretty heartwarming. So when I went to my wife and I talked to her about it, um, right away we just thought, yeah, this is a story that, that we should go and tell. I mean, the thing that's interesting sort of with all that is sort of how do you sort of separate how you want to create as fiction what sort of like what is that sort of balance between like taking inspiration from your own life at the same time not turning into like a biopic but also sort of trying to take that you know i don't know what you're about the inspiration the the stuff that you sort of like are like oh this is what makes it a good story and then recreate that without at the same time just recreating your life well in this case and i haven't this is the first time i've ever talked about this uh we we made an outline this is going to sound so cheesy but we made an emotional outline where we started from the the standpoint of sort of how me, my kids, my wife, how we were feeling from this state phase into that phase. Because again, you know, at the very beginning, we weren't sure, well, how much of the story are we going to tell? You know, how, how many years into this? How many, yeah, how many weeks? How many yeah, months? Yeah, yeah. What's going to be the timeline of this? And so I started really writing down emotions and how I felt at any given time. And I started thinking a lot about, in particular, of when you know, you go through these phases of you go through this very naive phase where you kind of think like, oh yeah, I can do this. And then all of a sudden you get hammered with the reality of it. And then you, and then, and it's not just me, I've met so many families that have gone through the same thing. Then you go through this phase where you're trying to figure out there's got to be some way back to the life I had before because this was a terrible mistake yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I'm, it's such a nightmare. And then, and you're, and then you kind of go through this acceptance, but then you get to this place where you, realize that you're becoming a family and that you're falling in love with your kids and it's it, it's amazing and uh, so I wanted to, to carry through all of those emotions there's I mean I think the emotional sort of uh, plotting makes a lot of sense how does it how is it impacted though as you're going through this process and you're sort of re imagining these experiences and understanding the emotions you have. It's, it's sort of one of those things that's like, I don't know, like I think of sort of psychology or something like that, where it's like you're supposed to like learn from the person, but you're not supposed to like interfere with it. But at the same time, you're like actively thinking about these memories. But while you're thinking about the memories, you're sort of like reanalyzing how you thought about them. Like, is there some sort of like aspect of, of re going back and experiencing these, these things that changed how you felt about them? Yes. The beginning? Well, first of all, I, I think the whole process was really good for me and my family. Um, and, and I never would have expected how good. But, you know, when you think about so much of therapy is just talking about whatever it is that's in your brain, mm-hmm. whatever it is that you, you know, you're dealing with. So I had to talk to so many people about my family and I had to tell so many people how much I love my kids and talk okay. about the, you know, some of the harder parts. And And then I went and I talked with a lot of other families and sat down with all of these other families. And I found that we we joked about this, that we had hit on a new thing called movie therapy because some of these families were having literal like breakthroughs while they were being interviewed by me because I was so non-threatening to them that that they weren't talking to a therapist of somebody that they felt like was going to be judging them for years to come or somebody who was going to be talking to other members of their family. It was just, and they were very honest because they really wanted the movie to be accurate. So people would just be insanely honest with me and and we would have these moments where people would cry and we would talk and we'd realize like, oh wow, we just sort of hit it. We just, we just kind of made a breakthrough there, didn't we? <laughs> well, the, one of the other interesting things that you can talk about with this film is like, I mean, it's a dramatic 
comedy. Yeah. And so it could be probably, I mean, there are probably a ton of different ways you can make this movie. You can make the super serious drama. You could probably make it a slapsticky comedy. Like, how, what was sort of that process um, to figure out that tone of it? And one of the things I'm sort of curious about in regards to the comedy aspect is I sort of reading this book recently and they talked about sort of the, their theory of comedy being that it's the subversion of non-threatening things. So what was your sort of perspective as you approached this film? Like how did you decide what should be comedic? How did we go about taking these potentially, you know, dramatic situations and turning them into funny things? Like how did you sort of approach that? Well, if you're, if you're somebody that deals with difficult situations with humor, which I am, mm -hmm. and, and it turns out my kids are too, um, then you, you, you don't really shy away from the darkness because the, a lot of times there's really funny things in the darkness. We, we live in a time right now where it's very easy for people from the outside to judge and say, oh, you shouldn't laugh about this and yeah. these things should never be funny. Yeah, yeah. But the reality is when you're on the inside of this, you have to laugh about it. And when you go to these, these support group meetings with all these families that are dealing with all these difficult things, we're laughing all the time in these yeah, meetings because you have to. And the laughing makes you feel better. So I learned this this amazing lesson. I'm a huge John Hughes fan, and I've always have been. And uh, I early on in my career, I had this amazing opportunity to actually talk to John Hughes on the phone for about wow. two hours, <laughs> and uh, it was it was pretty incredible. And he one of the things that he told me that always stuck with me is he said it's not the size of a laugh that matters; it's how that laugh makes you feel. And if you can involve the audience emotionally and then turn it on a laugh you get a much better laugh, you get a better quality of laugh. And even in the mo most screwball comedies that I've worked on, we've always tried to involve the audience emotionally in the characters, and we've always tried to look for places where we could make them feel something and then, and then make them laugh right after. And this movie was just a treasure trove of that, because throughout the movie, we never wanted the movie to dip all the way down into this, you know, uh, you know, in, into the kinds of movies that have been made on this topic, because sure. I, I th that that's very well covered territory. But at the same time, we never wanted it to be silly or to make fun of anything as well. So we were always kind of riding this line all the way through of trying to um, pay the proper respect. Uh, take the audience to places, talk about things that they're they're not expecting us to talk about, but then always bring it back to the comedy. I mean, that, that's, a, that's sort of an interesting thing to think about. And I, I think about it in terms of the context of like the film of it being like, you know, it's a story about adoption. And you could easily sort of try and paint this as a, a wonderful picture of like, oh, adopt kids. It's an amazing experience, you know, yeah. it's no, no, but like at the same time, you kept sort of that authenticity of like, it's hard. Like this yeah. is not an easy sort of aspect. How do you sort of like, work that line of um, trying to keep this true to the experience without sort of like painting it overly glossy, making this like happy ending, everything's easy, no problems, no, you know. Well, I mean, there are, every, fo every foster care story, every adoption story is totally different. Sure. Some are really, really difficult, some are, for fairly for painless, me, yeah. you know. You'll you'll meet these people who would be like, oh, you know, we we met our daughter. She was five years old. She was the greatest. We've you know, like you hear those really easy stories, and then you hear, you know, there was a woman that that uh, it, in the movie there's a scene where uh, they're going through their honeymoon period, mm -hmm. and they're at the support group, and they're talking about how easy it is. And there's yeah, this guy who's given Mark a hard time, and the woman who plays his wife, where she says, you know, she she says that line where she says, oh, they got lucky. Yeah, yeah. That woman is we met her in our research phase and she's an adoptive mom who had some really incredibly difficult situations to deal with and she has such a great sense of humor and she's so funny and she um, and she is the first to tell you that despite the fact that she's been through some really difficult times she wouldn't change it she wouldn't have it any other way it there's also the scene where like they have that 
family that inspires them to do in the first place, and they go and visit them later, and they're like, oh no, this is like just yeah. as screwed up as everything. Which yeah. is, is really a brilliant thing because it sort of shows that like despite exterior veneers or whatever, that like there's a lot of complexity for everyone going through this. Yeah, exactly, and that's the thing. If foster care, you know, adoption, it's messy and it's complicated, but so is family in general. I mean, you know, and I, I think that people tend to think, oh, well, there's family, there's, there's regular biological family, and that's easy, but this is really hard. And it's like, I, I know a lot of biological families, and none of it's easy. It's all complicated, and it's all messy. So that, that was the thing. To answer your question from before, I just stayed true to my own story emotionally in that mm -hmm. sense that I'm not going to shy away from the times, you know, like there's a part in the movie where Pete and Ellie are talking about how can we get back to our, the easy life that we had before. And I'm not proud of it, but I had that conversation yeah. with my wife. There's got to be a way out of this shit yeah. show somewhere, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, so we wanted to really take people through all of those emotions, but we also didn't want to shy away from the, the sweetness and the love and the joy, because that's all really real too. Uh, yeah. I mean, the sort of the thing that, um, I'm, I'm kind of curious about is um, when you are putting together a film like this, how do you sort of go about making it, I don't know what you want to say, consumer friendly at the same time? Because like, I'm sure there's pressure on you to be like, hey, make a hit or whatever. How do you sort of balance that concern of like making an authentic story with also making a quote unquote crowd pleasing film? Or is that even something that you think about and you just say like, it's going to be what it's going to be and it'll go where it's going to go? Well, I'm, <laughs> my, it's sort of, I, I don't know, this, this is something that has just been through, throughout my career that I like crowd pleaser movies and I like making crowd pleaser movies. Sure. I, I, uh, and those kind of movies don't always get a lot of respect sometimes, but I, there's nothing that makes me happier than to sit in a movie theater, whether it's my movie or somebody else's and yeah. just cheer and laugh. And when you're in a, and when you're in, when you're sharing a movie that is a crowd pleaser with a crowd, it's, it's an awesome feeling. And, and it's a feeling that I feel like is, is being, uh, that's, that's not being paid the proper respect because now there's this sense of like, oh, I'll just watch it on Netflix and everybody's watching movies in their, in their homes more and more. And of course I do it all the time too, but that experience of sharing an experience in a movie theater and in particular a crowd pleaser experience in a movie theater. So it's not hard for me to want this movie to be a crowd pleaser from the beginning because right. that's what I love. Um, but there was never, I got very lucky in this movie. And part of it is that when you have Mark Wahlberg in your movie, everybody kind of goes. Yeah, Rose Byrne, very yeah. good cast pretty much. Exactly, when you have these, this, when you, Octavia Spencer, when you have these kinds of, of, of actors in your movie, the studio really trusts you and lets you, you know, have some leeway and, and, and that really helps. So we really never had to do anything for commercial purposes. You know, beyond just wanting to make a really entertaining movie, we never really had to, we never had anybody come in and say, don't say this. I mean, yeah. we mentioned sexual abuse in the first five minutes of this comedy. Yeah, yeah. So you can, I think you could tell that nobody is coming in and telling us what not to do with this movie, you know? And how is it, I mean, I know you've worked with Mark Wahlberg. And by the way, just to be clear for anyone who hasn't seen the movie, we mentioned that in a respectful, yeah, not, yeah, not a yeah, comedic yeah, no, way no, in no. any way, so. But like, I know, I know you've worked with Mark Wahlberg several times before. What is it sort of like putting him into your sort of shoes and sort of see him, in a sense, acting out your life in front of you? Is, it, is, that, is that a weird experience? Is that a cathartic experience? Does that make you look at your life and be like, huh, I wish I'd done this differently? Or is, is it one of those things that you're just like, like I wish I'd worked out more? Yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh>. um, <laughs> well, the weirdest thing was that he sort of dressed like me in the movie, because I, in my normal day-to-day, yeah. -day, I- Actor, capture. You know, yeah, <laughs> I kind of just wear flannel shirts and baseball hats and jeans, and that's just kind of who I am. So. Um, uh, but no, I, I didn't really think too much about him playing me because he really wasn't. He was playing a fictional character that was inspired by my story. There's, there were definitely a lot of moments where I thought, okay, Mark's doing me a little bit right now. But the hardest part, honestly, was that I was so just emotional about everything that was going on in the movie because I either was thinking of my own kids, I was thinking of kids I met along the way. So they would be doing a scene and I would be hiding behind the monitor just with tears coming down my face and I'd have to get it together because it's embarrassing to cry in front of Mark Wahlberg for three straight months. <laughs> I mean, you've worked with him long enough. He probably yeah, no, no. He's great about it. But still, like, I mean, you know, 
you don't want to, as a, as a man, you don't want to be in there crying in front of Mark Wahlberg. So, <laughs> I mean, the, the, at a level, this is, as I said, dramatic comedy. There's a lot of comedy to it. But like, as a movie, there is a, a heart and is a message to this film. What is it that you sort of would ideally like people to see this film and sort of come away with it? Is it that, you know, think about adoption. Is it that, you know, life is tough, like work through those tough, I, I, I don't know, there's so many things that you could theoretically take as a message. What is it that you would sort of like people to sort of think about as? Well, look, there's a lot of things that I'd love people to, to take away from sure. the movie, but but if there was one thing, it would be the, to change their perception of who these kids are that are in the system. Because the a lot of great movies have been made about, on this topic, and they do tend to uh, you know, some of the, the great ones, some of the bad ones, they, they do tend to reinforce those fears and feelings of, of pity that people have towards the kids in the system. And it's really doable. There's so many of these kids that need homes. And there's, you know, we live in a country of 300 million people. There are so many families out there that I think people have thought about it, they flirted with the idea, but they're afraid of it. So I want people to see the movie and see that there isn't anything to be afraid of, that these are just kids and they need love and they need parents and they have a lot of love to give. And I feel like if people come in and they just get a more positive vibe off of the whole thing, maybe if, if they do have the inclination at some point, maybe they'll be more likely to give a kid a home and that would be incredible <laughs> and I think just taking it all with a little bit more of a sense of humor and willingness to sort of like laugh at yourself and realize that you know life is tough any way you slice it like yeah um, anyway thank you so much Sean for doing this film instant family coming out the 16th perfect time for that Thanksgiving holiday and all that good times <laughs> good vibes um, everyone should definitely check it out don't need to take my word for it just watch the trailer it's very engaging um, thank you so much and best of luck with everything thank you